Now, I just want to start this video out by saying thanks to Rebel or at the Real Rebel on Twitter for sending me the link to this video, which I probably would have otherwise never come across or seen. A video which was a live stream where writer J.W. Rensler, who was an employee of Lucasfilm for 15 years, from 2001 to 2016, and wrote or edited a couple dozen books in that time, among other things. And these were more non-fiction or behind-the-scenes or making-of books that he wrote or worked on. Anyway, in this live stream, he talked about several things Star Wars and Lucasfilm related and gave us a small glimpse or hinted at what it was like behind the scenes when George Lucas sold to Disney. And I say a small glimpse or hinted at because he's under an NDA or non-disclosure agreement and has to be very, very careful about what he says. He was even writing a blog at one point that he called The Rise and Fall of Star Wars where he was talking about how things at Lucasfilm changed from the moment George Lucas sold to Disney up until the time he left again in 2016, as well as his experiences at Lucasfilm over the years. And no surprise, Disney was none too pleased about that, and one of their lawyers contacted him and told him to basically shut it down. And before I get any further into this, a link to the original video in its entirety can be found in the description below. And as always, don't just take my word for it here or listen to my own conclusions. But do check out his video for yourself and decide what you make of it. What, if anything, is there to be read from between the lines, if you will. Because, again, he doesn't come out and say anything directly against Disney. But he also doesn't seem to be too fond of them or the way they're running Star Wars. In fact, he said of the new Star Wars films that they're not his cup of tea, and that he's only even seen The Force Awakens and Rogue One, which in itself should tell you something, when a 15-year employee of Lucasfilm doesn't even want to see the three films that came out after he left the company. He then said of the two films that he had seen that it was painful for me to watch them because I knew what had been going on. He then cuts himself off and gets a tissue, which is either just a heck of a coincidence that he needed a tissue at that very moment, or he stopped himself from saying something he knew he probably shouldn't say about what is indeed going on or happening behind the scenes at Lucasfilm. He then starts again and talks about how he was in the trenches for 15 years and doesn't want to see movies that seem to him to be made by committee. He then goes on to talk about how the Star Wars movies were an expression of George Lucas, that he's a great artist, and that even though Lucas obviously worked with many different people over the years, everything always went through Lucas. They were always his movies. And then when you consider that he was working on a making of The Force Awakens book, I'd say there's a really, really good chance that if he thought the films were being made by committee, that they were. In fact, the book never saw the light of day. It was never released, even though it was finished. And he said that there was nothing controversial in it, but that it did tend to show, when all laid out, that there were production problems behind the scenes on The Force Awakens that Disney likely didn't want people to know about. And other than all this, not a whole lot is said in regards to Disney's handling of Star Wars, though he does talk about a few other very interesting topics, like how he wrote for the Clone Wars for a bit, and was actually the one who named Jar Jar's love interest in the show, and that he was told by George Lucas himself that he wanted to see Jar Jar rehabilitated a bit. Anyway, the whole video is interesting, and I'd recommend checking it out. As for my own speculation about what he had to say, well, certainly him talking about how he feels like the movies are being made by committee, was the most interesting part to me, because The Force Awakens does very much feel like a movie that was engineered to try and be the perfect Star Wars movie, to appeal to as many people as possible, instead of maybe just telling the best story possible. It really does feel more like a product of focus group results and a lot of people, many of which with no real love or understanding of Star Wars, sitting around in a room trying to figure out what they can do with this movie to make the most money possible. And what that movie was very much lacking in was originality. Even George Lucas himself said they didn't do anything new. And love or hate J.J. Abrams and or The Force Awakens, but that was Abrams making exactly the movie he was told to make. No more or no less, I feel. And no, I'm not trying to say that if he was left completely to his own devices, Abrams would have made a masterpiece of a Star Wars film. But a lot of the blame for that movie and what the trilogy would turn out to be falls on the shoulders of those who put making money over just telling a great story, not understanding somehow that a great story created by someone with a deep love and understanding of Star Wars would have made them a lot of money. And I think when it comes to The Last Jedi, they did the opposite. They let Ryan Johnson pretty much run wild with the story, especially after one of the biggest complaints against The Force Awakens was its lack of originality. If anything, they told him to do something different, completely different with it. 
but Johnson seemed to go too far in the opposite direction. Instead of engineering the perfect Star Wars movie, he just made the movie he wanted without too much concern for the movie that came before, or the one that would have to come after. Nor was he all too worried about lore or world building, as he himself basically admitted to when asked if he had a different approach to movies in a pre-existing universe, and said, no, not at all, because I don't really think in terms of universes or in terms of creating worlds or whatever, that's not that interesting to me. Anyway, my other big takeaway from everything Mr. Rinsler had to say is that Star Wars is missing that person at the top. That person who only loves and cares about the story and wants to tell a good one above all else. It's missing George Lucas or someone who can, not replace him per se, but at least be something akin to a close approximation. Someone like Dave Filoni perhaps. And as I've said time and time again in videos, if you want Star Wars to work, if you want to get it right, you need someone in charge or overseeing or in complete control of the stories. You need someone at the top deciding what does and doesn't work for Star Wars, what stories should and shouldn't be told. A good story can certainly benefit from the input of many, many people, but you still need that one individual who makes the final calls, or someone who instinctively knows what's best. And part of that job was basically supposed to belong to the Lucasfilm story group. They don't write or dictate the stories, but they're supposed to be able to keep track of continuity and make the calls on what does and maybe doesn't work for Star Wars. But the problem with them, I would imagine, is likely that they have no real power when it matters most. They probably have or had very little say over the movies or over the sequels. I mean, even, let's say, if they had some issues with The Force Awakens after reading the script, the powers that be at Disney likely told them it doesn't matter, that this is the movie we're, again, engineering for everyone, that this is the movie that will make us the most money. Who cares if it doesn't make complete sense lore-wise if it makes $2 billion at the box office? Anyway, and again, this is just pure speculation, but as the years go by and NDAs potentially and hopefully expire, I think we're going to learn a lot more or hear from a lot more unhappy Lucasfilm employees or former employees. I have to imagine there are a lot of people who have been or had been with the company for years, who worked under George Lucas and really liked him or were loyal to him, that do not like what happened after Disney took over, that aren't fans of the sequel trilogy. I think there are a lot of people itching to tell their stories, but are afraid to be sued into oblivion, to put it simply. And I also know there are a lot of rumors out there about conflicts within Lucasfilm, or conflicts between Lucasfilm and Disney, and so on. And there are even rumors floating around about the sequel trilogy being decanonized, or redone, or whatever might happen to it. And I gave my thoughts on that in another video. I talked about how, for better or worse, I can't see them ever doing that. I can't see them angering the fans who did like the sequels to potentially please those who didn't. I can't see them reopening, or maybe I should say widening, the divide in the fan base. Still, skeptical about that as I am, I do think or hope big changes are coming to Lucasfilm. I think part of the reason why there was going to be a Star Wars celebration this year, when outside of The Mandalorian Season 2, nothing major that we know of is even coming in the near future. Anyway, I think mainly that was because they had some big announcements to make. I think a heavy focus was going to be placed on moving the franchise forward and what the future of Star Wars is going to look like. And who knows, maybe new leadership would have been announced to go along with this. Maybe Kennedy would have announced that she was stepping down when her contract expires next September, and part of the reason for this celebration could have been, well, celebrating her time with the company, as well as the sequels she has given us, as well as all she's done for Lucasfilm over the years. And then once again, the overall theme could have been looking forward to the future of Star Wars. And yeah, I know some of you are anything from amused or disgusted by the idea of honoring Kathleen Kennedy. All I'm saying though is that when it happens, when Kennedy steps down, and she will almost certainly step down and not be fired, thus allowing her to save face and keeping Disney from having to fire a woman in such a prominent position. So when she does step down, it will be celebrated. I don't see her being chased away in shame for the aforementioned reason that it will save face for Disney or save them a headache. Even though, who knows, maybe behind the scenes, they are very much chasing her away. Anyway, I'm getting a bit off topic, so I'll wrap this up. But my overall point is, again, I think there are a lot of people at Lucasfilm who are not happy with the direction of Star Wars. And if I could ask Mr. Rinsler a question or two, not that he could answer them because of that NDA, but it would be, overall, what do people inside of Lucasfilm think of Kathleen Kennedy, or what did you think of her? And what's the general feel from employees towards new Star Wars? And if you happen to be watching this and you aren't too upset with anything I may have said or any assumptions I may have made about what you said, do feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to talk some Star Wars with you sometime. 
Well, that's all I've got for this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about all this. What do you think it's like behind the scenes at Lucasfilm? Because we've certainly heard a lot of rumors or reports from anonymous sources, but this was the first time that I can really think of that we actually had a former employee talk as candidly as, well, as candidly as they could considering NDAs. Whatever the case may be, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.